Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. Here at Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share us with our with your network. So a lot of you have small businesses. Some of you have just really cool, neat ideas that are out there, things that people are buying, people things that people need to see and be and do. Have you ever thought about copywriting your stuff? I know, me neither. Let me introduce you to somebody who's going to talk to us about copywriting and what it all means. Y'all, please say hello to my friend, Miss Sherry Andrews Esquire. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Ricky. How are you? I'm doing well. Sherry, thanks so much for joining us because this to me is so interesting. And I never met a copyright attorney. So tell me real quickly what a copyright attorney is or does. All right. Copyright is a small piece of what I do. Um, it's copyright and trademark and trademark is actually the bigger half of um, what I do. But copyright is all about your creative expression and protecting that. And so you're looking at covering things like your blog post, books you wrote, um, images you've created, graphics, all of that kind of stuff, um, courses making sure that you have um, registered that with the U.S. Copyright Office so that it's protected, so that if you find out later that someone else is stealing your stuff and using it and selling it as their own, you have the means to go after them in federal court. Wow. The it, trademark it, side of it mm -hmm. is all about your branding. So it's all about protecting your business name, your logo, your tagline, the names of your courses or podcasts or that kind of thing, so that nobody else can use that in your space. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else tries to, they get stopped. And that's what the value of a trademark registration is. Okay. So that is interesting. So there's trademarking and copywriting. And you're saying the difference is one is your intellectual idea of a thing and the other is your brand. Is that right? One is your creative expression, ah, creative and the other is your brand. Unfortunately, ideas are not um, protectable by intellectual property. If mm. you turn them into something, they could be protectable under patent law, but that's not my bailiwick. Yeah, okay. So when my dad says that he invented Velcro, that's just an idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea until you actually create the prototype mm. and then you can go to the U.S. Um, copy, the U.S. Trademark and Patent Office mm. um, and file for a patent for that. Right. Unfortunately okay. for him, somebody else already owns it. I know. I Yeah. Dang it. Missed it again. I swear. So there are a lot of things that people are doing. Like, you know, I've written books and Faith on Friday is a brand in and of itself. And there are so many business owners that are watching this right now who think, well, I have a small business. Nobody really cares. Do I really need to trademark something? What would you say to them? I would say it depends. <laughs> okay. So, um, Trademark is a very nuanced kind of thing, but here's the big question. If you were told tomorrow, and, and I'm going to pick on you because, you know, you're the one here, yeah, that wanna... you could no longer use the Faith on Friday brand. Mm -hmm. You found out somebody else already owns the trademark for it, and it's too close to what you're doing, and they have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, you can't use that anymore. Not only can you not use it, which means you need to rebrand everything, change your website, change your, you know, your podcast name, all of that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you made any profits using that name, you owe them to me because I own the trademark. Holy cow. Wait. So what you're saying is, so say for instance, since we're picking on me, my feelings aren't hurt. So if, so I've been using Faith on Friday for six years, six, seven years. If somebody shows up and says, excuse me, excuse me, Faith on Friday is mine and I've had it for however much longer. And here's my information. Any money made off of this, I'd have to turn over to them. I have to pay them back. You could, yes, you could owe them any profits you made using their trademark name. Holy cow. 
<laughs> and that precise scenario has bankrupted many small businesses, bankrupted. I can imagine because, you know, as a small business, you go out there and you do the name search and you make sure that no one else has your name. You have a logo created specifically for you. And then to have somebody come back and go, no, that's mine. It's been mine. And, and it sounds like though that may not necessarily be so, it's just that they trademarked it before you did. Well, so here's the thing. When you talk about having your, you know, you get your name. So mm -hmm. you go to your department of state and you file for an LLC or a trade name, you know, different mm -hmm. states call it either a uh, trade name or doing business as or fictitious right. name registration. Mm -hmm. um, so you file that or you file an LLC or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're only guaranteeing your use of that name mm -hmm. for business purposes in that state, which doesn't give you any rights the minute you cross a border. So wow. as a new business owner, Mm -hmm. setting up, you need to check not just your state registry, but uh -huh. also the USPTO to make sure somebody else isn't already using that name in wow. your space. Okay. So like if you were to look up Faith on Friday on USPTO and find out somebody else is using it for church services or mm -hmm. Bible school classes, or mm -hmm. somebody else is using it to sell t-shirts. And you're mm -hmm. like, okay, that's fine. That's not what I do, right? Right. That's okay. You could still use Faith on oh, Friday. Okay. You could file mm -hmm. the registration for it because you would be filing in a different class in a different business. I see. But okay. if they're also doing podcasts about entrepreneurs and in this space, mm -hmm. then you can't use it. And that's something you need to find out mm -hmm. before you start really building your brand around a name and, and spending all that money because, you know, you yeah. don't want to find out at the back end that you were wrong. Oh my gosh, that sounds absolutely painful. I actually have a friend that this kind of happened to. She was using her name, her name's initials, her first, middle, and last name initials as her company name. Six years later, she found out through a cease and desist letter, which we'll talk about in a second, that there was a company with that same initials name. So she could no longer use her own name as her business. And she had yeah. to rebrand everything. That's insane. So now you said looking up things on the uh, PTO, uh, what is that? The patent? US PTO is the US Patent and Trademark Office. Oh, and okay. They have a search website. That's one mm -hmm. of the services that I offer mm -hmm. is trademark searching. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can go on there and use it. The only question would be, do you know enough to use it in a way that you're actually going to get the correct answer? Right. Because um, that's my next anyway. question. Can I just do this by myself? Do I need a Sherry Andrews Esquire to do this for me? You can always go on and search your name, but what you're searching is what we call a knockout search. You're looking for your exact name. And if mm -hmm. it doesn't come up, you think, oh, great, I'm I'm good. Let's go. Mm -hmm. What you don't realize is that the USPTO can deny registration and you can get in trouble with somebody who already owns a trademark, mm -hmm. even if the name isn't exactly the same. Really? If it's similar enough that it can cause confusion. Mm -hmm. or it's trading into their space. Um, and we look for look alike, sound alike, have the same mm -hmm. commercial impression, confusingly similar. All of those are reasons that you could um, run into trouble and not be able to use the name. So when a trademark attorney does a search, we're mm -hmm. not just looking at the exact name. We're looking mm -hmm. at the name with common synonyms. We're looking at the name spelled differently. We're, you know, like we're looking wow. at a lot of other things that sure. probably wouldn't occur to you to look look for. I know I wouldn't because I, I love what you said, the knockout search. So basically you're knocking out the fact that somebody else has my exact name. Right. That is so funny. So now that you probably can do it by yourself, how is it super inexpensive? Like it's like four or five dollars and I can get my trademark and everything's good. Is it expensive to do? You're laughing. So I'm taking that as a yes, it's expensive. <laughs> um, it's not the cheapest thing. 
um, mm -hmm. to do. However, it's worth every penny in terms of protection, in terms mm -hmm. of the peace of mind that you get of knowing that you have the rights to your name. Nobody else can take it from you. If they try, you have the right to sue them in federal court. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of advantage to actually getting the trademark done. Mm -hmm. Now you can look at different services. You can look at different attorneys. The prices are going to be kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but expect if you're using help to spend around two grand for a mark. Oh my now, gosh. The other thing I'm going to tell you is that we earn it. We earn it big time. The amount of research, the hours of time that goes into just the mm -hmm. search itself. And then on the application end, the work that we put into getting just the right specimen, getting mm -hmm. just the right information into that application to give you the best chance of the USPTO accepting it. Yeah. Yeah is a lot of work. Wow. And I include in my fees mm -hmm. um, responses to USPTO office action. So when they come back and they say they don't like the specimen or they want you to just claim right. some words or whatever, I include that in my initial package. Oh, so wow. that those are the kinds of things that the people that sign on their own that try to mm -hmm. do the application themselves, right. they get that office action from the USPTO and they're like, what's this? And I don't know how to answer. I don't even know what they're asking me. Sure. Like, letter makes no sense because if you're not educated in that and you don't understand what they're looking for mm -hmm. when I do searches I can't tell you how many applications I see that were abandoned because mm -hmm. people never responded to an office action yeah and and that's something that like you said you don't know it reminds me when you're talking it reminds me of the guy who says don't worry I can fix the sink and as the house is flooding he calls the plumber you know, and of course, now it's going to cost more to get it done. So I know one of the things that we had talked about one other time before, it's not just your name. You're looking up everything from what it is you do and do you are you selling books? Are you selling internationally? Because all of that plays into your ability to trademark. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So we're looking at not just your brand name, but how you're using your brand name, how mm. many different places is it appearing? Um, how So when you file a trademark application, it's by class and there's a filing fee for each class. But mm. let's say you have a podcast and you have done for you services mm. and you sell, um, pick any kind of goods, t-shirts, yeah, now, right. I'm not talking about t-shirts with your name emblazoned on them, but mm -hmm. let's say that's actually a brand that you carry and you've got all ah. different kinds of t-shirts. Okay. So now you're talking about three different classes where your name's appearing. So we're going to look at all three mm -hmm. classes to determine whether there's um, an issue in any single one of those classes. Oh my gosh. Now, I have clients that um, their services fall in a couple different classes. So maybe they're doing um, financial education. So financial literacy education, mm -hmm. they have some done for you services, some coaching services, some done with you services. Right. So those services would actually fall under class 35, but the coaching would fall under class 41. So, oh, wow. you know, we end up looking at both. Yeah. It, I, I, you've already saved me money by doing it for me. <laughs> Because the amount of money that I would spend on the mistakes, I would have paid your fee four times over. So yeah. when you finally get your trademark, yay, and you throw the big party and everybody's happy, how long does your trademark last? Is it forever? Is it mine now and no one else can use it again for the rest of their lives? Or how does that work? That's a very good question. So first off, congratulations, you have a trademark. You Woo! now get to use that little R with the circle around it. Mm -hmm. And that means you're registered. That's what the R stands for, registered okay. trademark. So now you're for real, you're official. Mm -hmm. What do you have to do to keep it? There's a couple of things. First <laughs> off, you actually have to police to make sure nobody else is using your mark. Because if you don't protect it, mm -hmm. you could over time lose it. The second thing is the USPTO does have what they call maintenance requirements. Mm -hmm. So in order to maintain your trademark, you have to um, file documents with them 
in certain um, time periods. The mm -hmm. first one is between year five and six. The second one is between year nine and 10. And then it's every 10 years after that, that you're wow. filing a maintenance document with them saying, yes, I'm still using this mark. Here's a specimen showing I'm still using it in commerce. Like I'm good to go. Right. If you mm -hmm. don't file the maintenance documents, you will lose the mark. You will lose your, your trademark. Wow. Um, but, That's so scary. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things, you know, they send you emails. If you've got an mm -hmm. attorney working for you, the attorney's on top of the deadlines and will be mm -hmm. reaching out to you saying it's time to file these maintenance documents mm -hmm. and you take care of it. As long as you're taking care of it and, and maintaining it, right. your trademark can last as long Whatever. as you're doing the goods, the services. And if you mm -hmm. have a business that you pass on to your kids and they pass on to their kids, that mm -hmm. trademark will go on for a very long time. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So yeah. international. Mm -hmm. So Faith on Friday is regional right now, but because eventually it's going to be a worldwide phenomenon and everyone on the planet's going to know who we are. What does my trademark look like then? Is it still the same or is there a different trademark for international? So when you file with the USPTO, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you're following, you're filing for a United States patent or mm. trademark. Every country has its own trademark process. If you're looking for global coverage, you're looking Which sounds to better file than global in domination. those countries, <laughs> but you're looking to file in those countries where you're planning on doing business. So a company like Nike has mm -hmm. a portfolio of patents. They have hundreds here in the United States, mm -hmm. but then they have a bunch in other countries too. Yikes. There's so much involved in this. This is insane. So Sherry, Someone watching this right now who says, oh my gosh, I need to get this taken care of. How could they reach out to you? Um, the best way would be actually um, book a trademark discovery call. And I'm going to have to give you a link for that because okay. the if I send you to my website, the book a call there is just for new general new clients. Mm -hmm. And the trademark discovery call gives us a little bit more time. Awesome. Well, don't worry, y'all. If you didn't get that information, we're going to have all of her contact information in the description below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and to share while you're here. And if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us a message. Sherry, before I let you go, my friend, we have to play a game. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. This game is called This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you off the top of your head. Just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Let's do this. Flowers or plants? Plants. Hotel or tent? Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was that was very. Don't get like, me anywhere near a tent. <laughs> love it. Okay. Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. You didn't seem sure, Sherry. Yeah, because I'm not a big fan of either. <laughs> okay. Well, no is still an answer, my friend. <laughs> Right. If we're talking joke. Disney, that's different. But... Okay. Yeah. That's an experience. That, that's that's yeah. completely different. Okay. Practical Joker or I don't play like that. I don't play like that. Me neither. I think they're mean. Candlelight or moonlight? Moonlight. I'm a planner or I make it up as I go. Planner. <laughs> I go all day or I need a nap. I go all day and crash hard at night. Oh, there you go. I, I understand that. When you're talking, do you say pecan or pecan? Pecan. Awesome. When you meet somebody, what's the first thing you notice? Their eyes or their smile? 
probably their smile. Okay. And for you, are you, do you like words of affirmation or acts of service? Both. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. Be nice to me while you're doing the stuff I ask you to do. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if we're talking the five love languages, all of them, please. <laughs> yes. If you don't mind, I like it. That's so good. And finally, what would you tell your 13 year old self right now? Man, I I feel bad for my 13 year old self, but I would tell her, hang in there. Your life is going to turn out way better than you could ever imagine at this moment. Hmm. That's so good. We're going to have to have a whole nother conversation about this particular question because everyone has, you know, they're like, they rethink of their 13 year old self and go, I poor girl, you're going to make it. <laughs> you're going to be okay. Keep pushing. <laughs> Sherry, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure, Ricky. Thank you so much for having me on. And for all of you all watching, thank you so much. That's it for this time. But don't worry, we'll be back with more Faith on Friday Presents.